saints in the mighty name of Jesus Christ to come before you this morning. We thank you for having enabled us to meet here to discuss on how to improve our system. Please stay with us throughout the meeting. And it is in Jesus' name I humbly pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Faith. We are now going to begin our training. As you have heard, my name is Jerusha Kimani, working from the ICT department. I'll be taking you through the e-learning training. I want to share my screen so that you can see the presentation I have. So you're going to have a training on the uh, e-class. It's the e-learning platform that we are using in the, at the University of Nairobi. Uh, the training outcome that we have, we are going to do today, we need to know how to access the e-class. We need to know how to set up the AD credential. I know this one you've been trained, but I'll just go through because it is very key on uh, when it comes to logging into e-class. We also need to see how you can enroll for courses. Uh, the menu navigation that we have once you, you log in, how you can be able to access the course content, uh, submitting your assignment, and also how you submit the exam. Now for the e-class, this is the learning management that platform that we are using at the University of Nairobi. It is based on Moodle platform. So we'll be able to uh, show you how you can be able to access both on web and also on mobile app. Uh, we mostly we have used the e-learning platform for doing the exam. We have seen lecturer using it for assignment and also uploading the content and the, uh, the recording they have for the classes. So in case you access, you can be able to get those resources. So how do you access the e-class platform? You go to the university website, then you'll scroll down. Uh, at the bottom, you'll find there's a column for student resources which you'll scroll, uh, you'll, you'll look through the items, there are many items there, and click on the link for the e-class. Uh, you'll be provided a place at your top, uh, top right where you need to log in. Username, you're going to put your registration number without the forward slash. And the password, you're going to put your AD password. Then how do you access it? Through the mobile app. What you'll do, you need to install an app the app is called Modo Mobile App. And when you install and you open it, the first thing that it's going to ask you is to enter URL. You'll put https full colon two forward slash eclass.enbi.ac.ke. Then the next, when you go proceed, you'll be able to log in using your registration number again without the forward slash and your password for the AD students. Now, it's good to note when you, you are using the mobile app, it's because you don't want to keep using the internet all the time. So for those who have notes on the e-learning platform and you feel you want to use the mobile app, you can download and have it on your phone. Then once you start, you access the content, those content will be available. You can access the content even when it is offline. But please take note, you cannot do the exam using the mobile app. You need to be to access the system using the web, the browser, and then you can be able to do the exam. Then we have the steps of how to do to set up your AD. In case you have forgotten your password, in case it's the first time that you are logging into the, uh, you are using the AD account. So we, I'll not go through the steps, but I'll be able to show you this practically. Allow me to skip that slide. Then we have the process of enrolling for the course unit. And this is once you have logged into the e-class and we have two ways. The first way, which is, I've called it method one, is where you search for the course code. And I said that you put a space between the letters and the numbers. And once you search, it gives you such a result. It can be one, it can be two, three, depending on the number of courses with that code that you have written. So you'll be guided uh, for you to know the course that you need to click on. You'll be guided by the who is the lecturer. It also gives you the course category it belongs to. 
which can guide you which course that you need to enroll for. Then you once you click on the title of the course, you'll just scroll down and you'll be able to see the enroll me button, click on it, and it enrolls you and open the course. You'll see this practically and you can repeat the same process for all the course, course, courses that you need to enroll. Then we have the method two. Method two is when you are not sure of the course code. So what you do, you'll go to the home button and then you, uh, you will scroll down, you'll see course categories. And then you choose your school or your faculty or campus, uh, select the degree program and it will list for you the courses. So click on each course. And once you click on a course you need, it will be giving you the enroll me button, click on it. And then you can go back one step to the list of courses and do the same process until you have enrolled all the courses. So again, we'll be able to see the same. Uh, I had also listed the menu navigation we have. Home, I've just explained. It will help you to navigate through and get courses through going course category. Then we have the dashboard. For the dashboard, it allows you to see the courses you've listed. Uh, you can be able to see we have courses here and we have timeline. Timeline allows you to see the events or activities that you need to do in the courses that you have enrolled. Then we have the event. In the event, this is where you find also again all the activities for the courses you have enrolled. So you can get them through the dashboard uh, at a timeline, or you can get them at the event. Uh, both of them give you the same, most of the same content. Then we have my courses. My courses just list for you uh, the course, the participant, or no, the courses that you have enrolled in. And anytime you click on any of this course, you'll be able to find there's another menu item called this course, and it allows you to access maybe the list of participants, the grades, the activities that you are doing. So you'll be able to see that. Then how do you access the content? Once uh, you click, you have opened the course, you're able to see the materials that are available for you. And there are some content yeah. that you can be able to download. Yeah. Winnie, please mute your mic. There are some content you can be able to download, others you are not able to download. For example, the SCOM module, you'll not be able to download. You can only access them online. And that's why we encourage in case you, you are not on uh, online throughout, just use a mobile app, it will help you. Then how do you submit the assignment? Uh, the first thing that you need to can have different types of assignments. We also have another column where the, you can be able to add a file and the system will provide for you a place to upload the file. And if you're uploading the file, please take note of the format that you, the lecturer expects. Some lecturer will allow you to upload any format. Others are going to restrict on the format that you can upload. So just make sure that you know which format. And then once you have uploaded, just submit the, exam, uh, the assignment and it will be available. Then we have some uh, about submitting the exam. The first thing you need to do is you access the exam and I've given the icon of how an exam looks like. Then you'll click on, uh, on the attempt quiz now to help you start the exam. And you'll have, when you do the exam, there are some which have MCQs, others, they are matching questions, others maybe short answers. You expected to type in the correct answer and others, they'll allow you to type in uh, essay questions where you type your answers or you upload a document. So you are going to look at this uh, practically, but I had taken a screen capture for those who will be asked to upload a document and I wanted you to know, take note of the two places that you can be able to use to upload the document. The first one is it allows you to add a file one at a time. So you click on this icon, it will allow you to upload one file. And in case the lecturer expected you to upload like three files, then you need to follow the same process three times. After you upload the third item, the, this icon will disappear because you're only limited to three documents. Then the other item that you can be able to use, we have this arrow pointing down. It allows you to drag and drop your files here so you can be able to uh, get the 
you can be able to, to upload the document at once. Uh, so that's the PowerPoint we have for now. So I now want to go to the browser and take you through the steps practically. So allow me to share this. Uh, the first thing we are going to start with is accessing the adstudents.tnbi.ac.ke. Uh, adstudents.tnbi.ac.ke. This helps you to be able to reset your password uh, for the AD. So uh, when you open this site, you'll click on forgotten or expired password. And then it will ask you to put your registration number. And uh, I just want to, for us to practice, maybe one of you can share, you can use the chat box to put your registration number and also you can put your university email. For practice purpose, but I'll not reset the password. So someone can share, please. You can use the chat box on the, at the bottom to share your registration number and also your uh, university email. Okay, thank you, Ruth. Please be typing for me your uh, email too. So this is the registration number I'm going to use for Ruth Kanja. And you are asked to put your registration number and then you remove the forward slash. So I will remove the forward slash. I want to copy this. And then I click on the search. When I click on search, it gives me this page. Again, I'll have the student username, remove the forward slash and put the email. And put the email then you will click on check answer. You click on check answer. So uh, now this one says that one or more response are not correct. If you get that information, please always take a screen capture of that detail, the details that you get and set to your email. Every college you have an email that you set to. So if it is CBPS, you set to ICT support, CBPS at UNBI. Take this screen capture. And most of the time, the reason is because you have not captured your university email in the AD portal. That's why you are not able to get, uh, the, you are not able to go through this process. So for now, uh, for you as Ruth, we cannot use it because we are not able to proceed from this stage. Maybe I can get someone else who wants to share theirs, but please send an email for you to be assisted on this. And once you are assisted, make sure the first thing that you do, you update your profile. Updating profile is to make sure that your profile is working and you have, put your, you have captured your university email. Now, Ruth, is your university email at UNBI or at student? Is it at UNBI or at student? Allow me to try the one for at student. We see if it's correct. Uh, yeah, so she had mistyped something. You can see now it, we are able to proceed. And I can now just this. system want me to confirm, so I'll click continue. To be logging. So allow me to put table. Okay. Ruth, kindly log into your email, check the code and send me through the chat.
So we give Ruth a, a few minutes. When you get that code, you'll just put it here and click on check code on your email. And when you continue, you, you get a page for resetting the password. So there are steps of resetting password. Please make sure when you are resetting password, you put, oh, thank you. So that's the code on the code. Yeah, you can see now that it won't, it has confirmed and verified. So you click on continue. where you can now put your new password. As you type your password, please take note of the uh, requirement. You need to create a strong password, the one that will be able to be using. Remember this, you are doing everything online, which is prone to hacking. So please put a strong password and don't share your password. So I want to type something. And as I type, I want you to see the strength of the password keep changing depending with what I'm typing. You can see this, it's good. So once it has shown you it's good, you can now confirm it by typing the same password again. And until you get a tick to confirm that the first password and the second password are the same. And after that, you click on change password. So once you change the password, you can put a security code to help you anytime you are changing the password that you it's only you who know that security code and you can also update your profile. So that's the steps of updating. Allow me to cancel this, I'll not change the password. And the next thing we now go to is to go to the e-class. How do you access the e-class? I say that you'll go to the university website And when you go to the university website, you will scroll down uh, towards the bottom. You'll be able to see the column for student resources. Click on e-class. Click on e-class, and then you log in with your AD credentials. For now, I'll use a student demo account. For you, please make sure I remember is your registration number without the forward slash and your pass unique password. So when you log in, uh, a few cases, you'll get this page. Just a few of you may get this page. Please take note of the uh, information that you have been asked, if it's the first name or surname or email address. Ensure that you have filled the information and then scroll down at the bottom and click on update profile. So once that is okay, you can now be able to enroll for the courses. I said we have two ways of enrolling for the courses. The first way, a method is where you go to search courses and you can type, uh, let's say I want to have, a, we have a code like SCI. I, I didn't know, if, uh, let's say I want to search for a course SCP space 203. I know this for not for CBPS, SCP space 203. You can see it gives you the course and it shows you the category under which degree program that course is being done. So it helps you. Uh, we can also try one for your college. I know we have a, a course like uh, SZL, maybe 310. And you can see the search results are two. So you look for the ones that has the code SZL310 and uh, the title is the same. You can also look at the degree program where it belongs. Then once you get it, click on the title of that course and you'll find the enrollment option in the enroll me button. So you'll click on this enroll me button, but please take note that any course you are going to enroll for, you cannot be able to unenroll. So please be very sure of the courses that you are enrolling. 
So when you click on Enroll Me, it takes you to the homepage of that course and you can be able to access the information that is there. You'll do the same for all the others. Just type the course code, search and enroll. That is method one. We have method two, where we say that you go to home button and then you go to the course categories. Here we have the course categories and click or go to the college, your college, this is College of Biological Sciences. Uh, biological and physical science, then go to the school. I can click on school of biological and degree program you're doing. And you have a list of the courses there. So you'll be clicking on the course. You'll be clicking on the course and you enroll the, that course, click on the enroll me button. Then once you have done that, you go step, one step back by clicking on the, deg uh, the degree program again to give you a list of the courses, click on the other course code and enroll uh, for that course. So take note of who uh, the lecturer is and also it falls under which degree program. That will be able to help you know which course you're enrolling for. Then once you have enrolled the courses, I said you can be able to get all the courses you have enrolled under my courses, or you can go to dashboard and click on courses, you'll be able to get the, all the courses here. We also have timeline. Timeline, I said it gives you an, a list of activities that are happening in the courses that you have enrolled for. Like for example, in one of the courses I've enrolled for, there's an assignment that is due in the, uh, on 30th April. And you can see I can even be able to submit. I can do and submit because it's enabled for me to submit before uh, the due date. Then we have, if the exams will be there, you'll also be able to find them here. I know there are sometimes you've gone to the course homepage and you have not seen the exam. And, you, and uh, we've gotten calls that some of you have not been able to access the exam. Please always come to dashboard, click on timeline, and you can be able to get the link for the exam. And also the, uh, the attempt quiz now. Alternatively, you can click on events. And again, it will also give you the same, all the, uh, it, if there is an assignment, if it is uh, an exam, you'll be able to find them and you can also be able to access them. So you, you can get it from here or you can use the dashboard timeline. So if you get it from here, you'll be able to see the assignment and click go to the activity to be able to help you to access it. Where you go to the homepage, go to the homepage of the course. Let's say for example, I'll use now the one that you are going to use for this training. You can search for CBPS001 uh, and you enroll for the course. This will help you for practice. Once you enroll, it takes you to the home page. So as you accessing the content, you're able to view this content. All this content is downloadable apart from this one, the, uh, the one that is com. For this one, you can only access it online. So you click on the link, you click on the link, and then it asks you to view. So you ensure that uh, by default, it's ticked on normal. So just click enter and you can be able to access that course. Take note, the content is on the left and on the right, it gives you, the course outline is on the left and on the right, it gives you the content. So like, for example, if I click on introduction, I'll be able to get the content for introduction on the right. So this is how you access the content, you use the, course outline on the left to access the content on your right. Allow me to close that and go back to the home page. So the others, you can download them to your computer and you can be able to access them later. Then we have assignment. I said we have two types of assignment. The one that you are asked, uh, you are asked to, uh, uh, to type in and the one that you can upload a document. So for the first one, 
uh, it allows you to, we have this assignment here, where you read through the assignment and you can see the deadline is uh, first May. So that's why you cannot be able to access it, but I want to change that time so that you can be able to see it even if it, uh, to change the deadline. For the assignment, which is there, it has two questions. You can see that you expected to type in your answers and the, the submission deadline is on 1st May, enabled because the deadline uh, you're supposed to have sent on, to send your work from 1st May. So just give me a second, I change this. Uh, I need to access it from the phone. So what I've done, I've removed the due date to make it available throughout. A minute, it's saving. Okay, yeah, it has saved. So if I refresh this page, I'll now be able to submit. Okay, the settings, just give me a second, uh, confirm the settings. So once you, if you get to assignment and you click and you cannot be able to get the, uh, the submission button, most of the time is the settings that have been done for that assignment. And if you check, uh, if the lecturer checks on the settings, a possibility, uh, the things that have not been set is the time for say, for that you allow submission from when should the student be able to set the uh, submission and up to when are they allowed to set the submission. So that's what I'm trying to change, just working with the date to make sure that you can be able to view uh, and get the, the admission button. So if you give me a second, this will be changed. So this one I've logged in as a lecturer. That's why I'm able to see the buttons. But for you to be able to see these buttons, you need to have gotten the time for submitting. Let me put this 21st, it's like 10.14.
I need to, for you to do an assignment, you must be enrolled to the course. So that I need to log in with a student account. I'll like, give me a second for this. Let's see. Okay, I can be changing this, the date as I work. Allow me to, I can start with the one for exam as I change the date for this. Or oh, you need to enroll for the course. Yeah, this is what I had not done. So allow me to enroll and I'm able to see this. You can see if you don't enroll for that course, you will not be able to, you cannot be able to submit the course. Uh, the assignment, I think that's the issue I was getting. I can confirm this. So I have the attempt quiz now. I'm able to see the attempt quiz now. I've clicked for the exam. Allow me to show you for the exam first as I sort out the settings for the assignment. Uh, when you click on the exam, it gives you the instructions that you, you need to go through or, so that you can be able to know what the lecturer expects of you. Then once you go through the, uh, the instructions, click on attempt quiz now. Click on attempt quiz now. We have different types of questions that are there. We have different types of questions that are there. The first one, you can see this is a, an MCQ where you just click on the correct answer. The second one is matching where you select, uh, you just choose, you read the question and choose the correct answer for that question. So for you to save uh, the answers, you need to click to another page, another question. You can click on next, next page or you can click on any other question. But if you rewrote, like for example, if I refresh this page by clicking on this button, I want to show you what happens because this I've been asked many times that if your pages refreshes, what, why do I lose my work? So you can see if you reload the page, you will not be able to save the work, but it resets to the default page that was there. So please make sure for you to save the work, you must click on the second, uh, and the next page or you can click on any other question. So I want to click on question three. And you can see the first one and the second ones, they have been saved. The first one and the second one has been saved. If maybe like, for example, in question three, I decide I've done the first two, and I try and move to the next question, you, what you notice is that there's a, a triangle at the bottom. And this again, we've gotten so many, uh, so many issues concerning this, that why do I get a small triangle at the bottom? This shows that you have not completely answered the questions. For example, if you had an essay question and uh, the lecturer expected for you to type, it was mandatory for you to type something and also to upload a document. And you just upload a document, you will get this triangle showing that it is incomplete answer. So most of the time you always encourage, please go back to the question, go through the question and confirm that you have done all, all the questions right. If you have done the questions right, also a possibility could be the settings were a bit wrong, but please confirm all your answers are correct, what you wanted to, to upload and they have been captured by the system. If that is okay, then uh, uh, you should not be worried. But if the answers have not been captured, then you need to make sure that you upload your answers again. Say that. You can uh, give it a second. 
you can see now it has saved this question. Now, there are other times that you want to, you've done a question, but you want to revisit that question. You can just use the flag to help you uh, note the question, especially for those who do so many questions. And when you put a flag, it just shows a red triangle again at the top right. So that, that just shows you that the question you want to revisit, it's like marking the way you are doing even manually and you, you, you circle a question that you want to revisit later. So it's just the same when it comes to the E-class that you can mark a question that you want to revisit later. So after that, we have the question five. Again, this is matching. So I'll allow me to just try and choose the answers. You read through, sorry, I'm not reading through, but in your case, you have to read the question and put the correct answer. So I now got question six, which is an essay question. And in the essay questions, you read through the question. Uh, there are two methods. Some lecturer just provide for you a place to type your answers. So in that case, you'll just come and type your answer. And if you have images that you need to add, you click on uh, insert or edit image, insert or edit image. And then you can click on browse repository. You can click on Browse Repository. On the left, ensure that Upload a File is selected. Upload a File is selected. And then click on Choose File. Click on Choose File. Uh, so you'll choose File. Remember, this is Insert or Edit an Image. So you cannot put a file, but you need to put an image. I want to attach a logo and then I click on upload file. So it gives you a preview of the image you have uploaded. You can uh, describe the image or you can click on description not necessary. If you feel the image is too big, you can resize, ensure auto size is, uh, is ticked. Then you can resize. I can just decide to put 80 there and click outside. You can see now this size is smaller. Then you click on save image to now put it on the text. And you can just press enter and continue typing your answer. Now, if you are supposed to upload a document, if you are supposed to upload a document, what you do, uh, at the bottom you find there's a place provided for you. And remember I said there are two ways, you can use add file or you can drag and drop. If I click on add file, it give me the like the page what I had previously, uh, a similar page. So I'll ensure upload a file is selected. Then I click on choose file. Choose file. I can look for a document and upload it. So we allow it to upload. So once it uploaded, you're able to see the icon and the title of this uh, the, the document you have uploaded. In case you want to change this name, you can always click here and you change the name. Like for example, I want to name this question six answer. So you're able to change from here and then you click on update. So you can see this has been changed. The other method, remember I said, is where you open your uh, folder. You open, you can resize it to be able to uh, see, get the information. Want to get a few documents here. So I want to copy 
the different types. And move them here for you to see. Uh, please take note that accepted files, they are all of them. So I'm able to view all of them. I can be able to, to get all, uh, I, I can upload any format. You, I, you can see I've uploaded a PDF, a PowerPoint, and a Word document. Uh, if you want to delete any document, you can always click on it and then delete and say OK. So that document will be removed from there. So I want to delete this one too and this one and just remain with one document. Then this was my last question. I can click finish attempt here at the bottom or I can use this one. But because flag this question, I want to go back to it. I want to go back to it. And uh, I remove the flag and then I can now click on finish attempt. So when I click on finish attempt, it give me a summary. If I want to go back, I can return to attempt. Or if I want to submit, I'll just click on submit all and finish. Again, I'll click on submit all and finish. And uh, once I've finished, uh, I can be able to get this page. This is the review page. You just scroll down and click on finish review, finish review. And once you do that, you'll get the summary of what you have done. In case you have been given more than one attempt, you'll get reattempt quiz. If it was only one attempt, you'll go back to, you'll be going back to the course. This button will be telling you to go back to the course. So let me, uh, I, I want now to show you the one for assignment. There's a poll that has been posted. Please make sure you revisit it. So for the assignment, this the, uh, is something I had already submitted. So it shows in for this one, it shows edit submission. Let me just access the one that I've not submitted something. I'll be able to change this other one. You can see I'm enrolled in this one for the first time. Yeah, so you have add submission. And if it is overdue, it shows you. When you get this add submission, you just click on add submission. And because it was online text, you'll be typing now the answer, okay? The place, just like what we have done in the exam. It's a similar uh, interface for you to type your answers. Then you can click on save changes to save your work. Then it gives you a summary of what you have done. The plus sign allows you to see more and view all the content that you have typed. Then we have the second method. Uh, let me go back to introduction and click on the second type of assignment where you are supposed to upload a document. This time, if you click on add submission, you can see you get a similar like one we had for the exam. Again, you can be able to upload using this, do, this link here, or you can drag and drop files. So I want to use the second method of where you drag and drop. So you go to your computer, select the document. Please take note of the file accepted here. In this assignment, they expect you either a PDF document or a Word 207 document. If you upload any other type of document, it will not be accepted. So I'll, I'll just drag and drop uh, a PDF there. Uh, and it has uploaded. To upload is for you to see the icon and the title of the, uh, the, the document you have uploaded. For this one, the maximum, docu uh, the maximum attachment was one. That's why you can see now the first icon I had for adding file, it's not there because I've already uploaded 
a document. If I delete this, then you'll be able to get back this icon for you to upload the document. And once you have uploaded, just click on save changes to save your assignment. So you can see it now shows that it's submitted for grading and you have the document shows you even the document that you have uploaded. I want to pause for now and ask if there are any questions. Maybe there was something that was not clear and then you can be able to clarify. Thank you. Patricia, maybe you can help us uh, in taking the questions. And if Omod is with us, he can now take the question and answer session. Thank you. Okay, Patricia, I can't hear you. Uh, any question, please just raise your answer. I'll be able to we see have, you. We have Omondi. Oh yeah, he, Omondi, please take the question and answer session. Thank you. And students, please kindly raise your hand. So that we are well coordinated and I'll allow you to unmute. Eh? So we can have uh, S Kamau, please ask your question. Make sure once you ask your question, you take your hand down. Okay, my question was, as I was uh, logging in, I was a little bit late and uh, there's something that I had say, uh, been uh, he's saying that um, you cannot do an exam without uh, with a mobile phone. So I wanted clarification on that. Yes, we can also have Konyen uh, so that we answer those questions at once. Yes, madam. Uh, I, I join a bit late, but even I'm not getting what you have been training. Maybe, maybe, maybe through the recording, maybe in the uh, shorter to pole pole because I'm on the other end of the world. I am near Sudan, so the network is a bit challenging. Yeah. No problem. So, so what? So, so I've been struggling. I've been struggling since. So I don't know how will you help me. And for you again, it is mandatory for us to do exam. So I'm, I'm a bit torn in between. I have so heard you. No I have heard you. No bundles. Um, no bundles. No telecom airline. You know, it's a bit challenging. So, and my question is, even this training, we are not getting on these methods. You are, you are training us to go through, and the exam is just around the corner. So, I don't know who you people. Help us. Thank okay, you. I'll take, I'll take Konyen's question. Konyen, we are, we are glad that you're able to be with us here. We have recorded this uh, session on YouTube. I'll share the, the streaming link. I, I, I've shared it on chat. When you're able to, please uh, get to that link and you can review our training for today. Then Jerusha, you can take the earlier question from Kamau. Yes, yes, hello, madam, please. Are you going to send through our email? I have already sent the link on that chat. I've already sent the link on chat. chat. Yes, you can mm. copy it and paste it for, for reference later. Where we, we, we are there, we can hear okay. from Mwigirwa Kennedy, please. Gloria, if you're able to talk, Bunei. Okay, I have a concern. I have a unit, a third year core unit that I'm supposed to do. And I am not able to access uh, the class because I, I because I had not I had no AD account. 
I've been trying to register the AD account. I sent an email, but I've just sent it during the session and I've seen a response from the help. The, there's an email that was shared just on the chat and I've seen an, an, an auto generation that my account is being worked on. So once the account is active, will I be able to, to find the, the class? Because so it's on the time, time, yes, it's on the timetable, but I'm not able to access uh, other classes. We I have accessed through WhatsApp, uh, through uh, my colleagues or my classmates, but this core co unit I have not been able to access. Yeah, that is yeah. noted. Yerusha or Mondi, kindly take the two questions. Okay, the first question, uh, the student was asking about how, whether you can be able to do the exam using a phone. Yes, you can do an exam using a phone. What I said, it is if you, in case install the mobile app, please don't use the mobile app to do the exam. But if you can use your phone, remember, you, if you're using the phone, you'll access the browser, go to the e-class, and you can be able to do the exam. We have so many students who have been able to do the exam using the mobile app. Then uh, for Gloria, the class links, please make sure you, you, you last with this. Uh, the AD, if it is working class links, they are associated with your student email, not even the AD. AD helps you access the e-class, the e which you'll be using for the exam. And that is if the school or your department chooses to do the exam through the e-class mode. Okay, what if they don't have an e-class mode? How will I get to know? No, the class, I, I believe you need to log into your student portal, update your details, ensure your email is already captured there, the student email and it is working. And uh, you can also follow up with the department to just uh, ensure they have captured the information the way that the information has been done for your school. Okay, okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, then we can have Sarah Mukelule, kindly. Hello, yes. Uh... Are you able to hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad to have joined this and really thought uh, I didn't know anything about the E class. And I also, because of that, I missed to do uh, last time the exams. Uh, my problem was in activation. I've been really trying, but uh, with no. Uh, uh, I've not, I've not been able to activate my account, but I've been told to send uh, my email and my registration to AD support. So I was just wondering how long does it take to activate it when I've already sent to AD support at your n.ac.ke. And then another thing, uh, I just joined, I joined late, but I was, I heard something about the mobile app. Kindly, may you clarify on that mobile app? Uh, that's okay for 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 the AD accounts. I believe that uh, Samuel is uh, solving the issues on chat. Confirm Samuel so that you can also sort Sarah Mukele. Yeah. Then we have uh, we have Acheng Acheng Deng Achiek Deng kindly. Yeah, thank Thank you. Yeah, thank you, please. Uh, this is my first time to join this training. And uh, there are a lot of information that have been shared. So, but uh, when you were going through, I was having challenges, especially on the side of uh, assignment, how to access the assignment and even up to the submission. So I, I also put on the chat uh, that if it will be possible to share the presentation, and then that one will help. 
but now uh, the question I need to ask is just uh, is there uh, a way where we can make practice on this? Because now there are so many things, and if you don't make practice, it will be difficult. So is there a side where you can maybe do some practice, like some meeting and like the exam and also like the assignment? Um, Jerusha, you can answer this one, that one with this one from Judith Akini. And the question is, uh, if you have done your work on a paper, for example, mathematics, and you want to upload your answer to the question, how do you go about it? Please take up the two. Thank you. Okay. Um, the first one uh, about the mobile app. I said mo some of you, not all programs, but I know there are courses that we have uploaded the SCOM module content. That content you cannot download on your phone. You can only access it online. So I said, if you have challenges using the internet and you have uh, you want to access those modules online, just uh, install the mobile app. And once you set it up, when you open the first time, it saves the, it, the course in your mobile app so you don't need to be connected to the internet throughout to access that content. And the other thing I said, anytime you are doing the exam, don't use the mobile app. The mobile app is helping you to access the content offline. That is the SCOM module offline. Uh, if you are doing the exam, you need to be using the browser because the exam is real time and it is timed. Uh, someone has also asked about the exam and these mathematical questions. Can you write on a piece of paper and upload? Yes, that is possible. When you write your answers, what we insist, take a clear photo that the lecturer will be able to see and read through the answers. Then once you take a photo, you can even log into your phone uh, to the, to, again to the e-class and upload it from the phone. All you can use nowadays, our chargers are disconnectable. You can connect. Uh, you can you connect using your charger to the laptop or the computer, and that helps you to and you enable the file sharing, so you're able to access the files from your phone, and you can get those uh, files and upload. And it when you upload, confirm that is the correct answer for that question. We have seen students putting all answers in one question. If you do that, it will only be marked that question. The other questions will not be marked. So please make sure that every question you answer and you put the, the correct answer for that question. If it is question two, put answers for question two, but don't mix the answers for different questions. And that one you'll be able to get a zero. And I explained this yesterday. The reason is the system has the maximum points you can give to a question. And you know that each question has the maximum point. So if you combine all of them, a lecturer cannot be able to mark and give marks higher than the marks allocated for that question. So please make sure you distribute for all the questions. Uh, someone has asked about sharing the presentation. It is possible. I'll make sure the PowerPoint presentation is available and you can access it online. And again, all this content, if you go to uh, how I showed you how to access the content, you go to the e-class, click on home button. At the course category, there is the first link for online training for 2020-2021. You'll be able to get uh, all these materials there. They are posted there. So you can be able to get them in case you did not, you missed out on something. Thank you. Any other questions, students? Uh, there is a student who is asking how you go about doing exams on Google Classroom. I'll paste for you a link, a link where you can go through that. So Anne, please, uh, Type your email on chat. 
then I I'll I'll get I'll I'll even paste it here now that we have Ruth Ruth Kanja. Please continue and ask your question. Uh, yesterday, I was in this class, uh, the last class for yesterday, and you were talking about uh, uh, when you log in into, a, when you're enrolling a course, you'll see the lecturer's name. So I tried on doing the, to enroll on CPY, the psychology class, and I noticed that the lecturer who is teaching is Professor Nanga, yet the lecturer who is teaching me is Professor Kimamo. So how do I go about that? Hello. Hello. Yes, I've heard the question. Uh, okay, now for the lecturers, this remember these courses are used by different lecturer. For probability, that is the lecturer who was teaching previously. But if the course is the same, uh, the, uh, we may need to liaise with the lecturer to make sure that he also have rights to the course because he's the one who is teaching now. So for exam, I'll do his, his, uh, his exam, or will I do for Kimamo? Or how can I just uh, be enrolled? No, 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 it's good you liars with your course lecturer. It's good you liars with your course lecturer. Oh, okay. So I've also noted someone has typed how, what, what does not graded mean at the assignment? When you submit the assignment, the lecturer needs to go through the assignment and grade. So not graded, it means the lecturer has not marked your assignment. Uh, the other person was asking the difference between the e-class and Google Classroom. These are just different two tools that are being used for teaching and learning. So it depends with what the lecture, uh, Google Classroom, remember it's part of Gmail, uh, the Google Suite, the e-class, that's a learning management system. So again, please follow what the lecturer is using. If the lecturer uses the Google Classroom, use the Google Classroom. If the lecturer is using the e-class, use the e-class. For us is to make sure that you can comfortably use any platform that the lecturer chooses to use. Thank you. So if Patricia, we, you can go. Yeah, if we don't have any other question, we can uh, stop here. Uh, and maybe what I need to add is that uh, anytime you have a, a question, specifically on e class, you just write to LST. Um, somebody like Violet or Macau can assist me to type on chat lst at unbi.ac.ke and also advise students if you know you're doing your cut maybe in two days time ensure that you try to log in into the into this the system and uh, then you can correct any issue that you may be having may it be your logging details so that we so that you're not inconvenienced the moment you're taking your exam or your cut and that is the time you're trying to be assisted immediately which may not be possible at that time so try to resolve your login to the system three days in advance two days in advance so that if there is a problem it can be sorted on time and uh, you have your time to do the examination so if there is no any other burning issue, then uh, we'll stop there and wish you your best in your studies and in your exams. So thank you very much and have a good day. Good that, uh, on YouTube and uh, we've, we've pasted the link earlier. You can always go back and, uh, and have a recap of what you've learned today. Thank you very much. Thank you.